think that we think would make somebody feel good or originate anything that we think would make it better. God is, he's the audience because he's given us what to do. We, we have to do it the way he say, says do it. I'm not the minister here, our brother, our minister's brother, Bishop, he's, he's out of town and we have capable brothers here to, to teach the gospel and to, to teach lessons. And I thank God for this, for this opportunity like, like always. Uh, also, I, I, I'll tell you, look around, and, uh, we, we don't guarantee membership now. If you look around, you see somebody that was doing something last night or last week that, you know, they shouldn't have been doing it as a Christian. We don't, we don't guarantee membership. We know that the church is right. We know that the teachers is right. God don't come to strong on us and make us do right. That's, that's, on, that's on us. Um, we read from uh, Isaiah 55 and verse 8, and I won't read it uh, uh, verbatim, but, but the gist is uh, God's thoughts are not our thoughts. God's ways are not our ways. You got to match up somebody, got to take it. It was God that says, I'll be the same today, yesterday, and tomorrow. So, so it won't be him. It won't be him. The change it will have to occur with you and I. And our change happens to be within our mind because our mind controls everything else. I chose for a topic, mind bending, because a conversion is really a healing of your mind. It's taking your mind and, 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 and transforming it to get you to see things a little well in our case a lot differently because God says our thoughts and our ways aren't just a little bit different. He didn't say that, did he? No. His thoughts are way, way higher. His ways are way higher than ours. Man. So there's a lot of bending. There's a lot of thought changes that has to has to occur. We know that Jesus Christ is the mediator That's right. from us to God. Mm -hmm. We know the importance of being in his body. We know that's important. We know the importance of being covered by his blood. Mm -hmm. We know the importance of that. Mm -hmm. But it's probably more scripture about us changing our mind than it is about being in the body and under the blood. In Philippians, the Bible says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. So there are some changes that, that has to occur because as a, a, a body of people, when we come to God, we come to God with carnal minds. We come to God with worldly minds. We come to God with all types of ideas and opinions, but those are nothing. In the sight of God. And we, we're going to have to change it. We're going to look at three points. We're going to look at, look at the transformation of our minds. The securing or safeguarding of our minds. And then the importance of being like-minded. And, and the lesson will be yours. Then there's, I got three scenarios for uh, the transformation of our minds. Then there's, a, there's a transition that's a pretty smooth transition. There's, there's a transition that a man will allow God and the Word of God to guide the steps. There's a transition that occurs when, when we are not conformed by this world, but we are transformed and renewed in our minds. And if we allow that transition to happen, it's a smooth transition. It's a smooth transition. It's not a mature right off the rip, adult transition, but it's a smooth transition. Kind of like, you know, taking, taking a baby. You know, when, when, when a baby is born, you know, there's some benchmarks, and there's some things that, you look, man, he's this, he weighs this, he weighs as much, he's this long, he's moving right along, he's moving right along. And it's some things that happen. Now, it doesn't make that child uh, an adult because the, the doctor say he keeps where he needs to be. There's a normal transition that happens in our growth. There's a normal transition 
that happens in our growth when we allow God's word to renew us. There's a normal transition that happens. I want everybody to turn to First Peter. I want everybody to turn to First Peter for me. And we're going to start at verse, and we're going to look at chapter 2. And we're going to look at how it's transitioned, how it's smooth, how we make it smooth. Uh, uh, First Peter chapter 2, starting verse 1, it says, Wherefore, laying aside all malice, all guile, all hypocrisies and envies, and all evil speakings, as newborn babes, desire the sincere milk of the word, that you may do what? Grow. Grow. See, the way that the transition is smooth, Peter says, first of all, to receive God's word, we got to put some things away. Man. Look at it again. It says, wherefore, laying aside all malice, all guile, hypocrisies, envies, and all speakings. For this transition that happens smoothly, Brother Curry can't hold on to a bunch of garbage and grow in God's word the way God and the are going to grow. Man. All right, I want you to look at James chapter 1. We're going to look at James chapter 1. We're going to look at verse 21. The Bible says, Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your soul. Again, here James is saying, there's some things you have to put away to receive God's word. Peter said there's some things you have to lay aside to receive God's word. Man. We can't hold on to garbage. We can't hold on to garbage and expect this year to be renewed. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't happen. If I take a, 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 a glass of good milk and I pour in spoiled milk, what am I going to drink? Spoiled milk. I can't take something that's pure and mix something that's not pure with it, and that thing remains pure. In order for it to remain pure, I got to put some stuff out of it so that it remains pure. That's the transition that's a smooth transition. Now, I'm not going to read 1 Timothy. Uh, I'm going to go to it, but I got it written down in 1 Timothy 4, 16. It says, take heed unto thyself and to the doctrine. Continue uh, in them, for in doing this, thou shalt save thyself and them that hear thee. In the, in the transition period, if Brother Curry, sister such such, brother such such, take God's word and we push those things away that hinder us from seeing God's word and we grow up in it and we stay in the doctrine, now I can help save myself and do what? I can help save somebody else. See, the biggest problem that we make sometimes, we don't fix self. And we're still in an infant stage and we got all this garbage and we're in an infant stage and we're trying to convert people. You know, the older people you sit with a, a little... 13, 14, 15 year old girl have a baby and say, babies and babies. See, if I'm a babe in Christ right here, how can I convert souls? If I'm a babe in Christ and I haven't bought into God's word, how can I help convert somebody else? It doesn't happen. It, it doesn't happen. I have to take it and make it my own and grow up in it, then I can help save myself and I can help save somebody else. We're talking about a smooth transition. That's somebody that's taking God's word, not knowing uh, from Genesis to Revelation as a new cover. I'm not talking about that. Taking God's word and growing in it. Notice now, we grow in God's word. We set aside Madness, evilness, and all of that. We put it aside. And the Bible says, all of it, put it aside. What we try to do, we try to gradually put away evil things while we're trying to learn God's word. Hey, ain't happening. That's not happening. We try to gradually put away evil things. Now, there's an order that happens. You put this away so you can receive this. We understand that. We go, we go to the store. 
I got $40 in my pocket. And there's a pair of sneakers that I like. And they $40. I said, all right, I'll give you this. And you give me that. We didn't say how it worked, no. No. I go buy a car. I like that car. I said, all right. I like that well enough. I'm ready to get this here up for it. I'll tell them. Dealership, I give you this, you give me that. That's how it works. That's an exchange. That's an exchange. Now, how valuable is God's word to you? How valuable? How valuable is God's word to me? I would say, all right. Also of your own selves, 
men arising, men arise speaking perverse things and drawing away disciples after him. We have to be on guard for that. If, if, if it wasn't happening, Paul wouldn't write it. And he's not talking to people outside of the church. He's talking to elders. He's talking to the elite in the church that you got to be on guard that you keep this thing right here silent. Because a wolf, he's there to destroy the flock. He's there to destroy the flock. There's a text that happens in congregations. If we would turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 11. I'm starting at verse 18. First Corinthians chapter 11. Verse 18 says, For first of all, when you come together in the church, I hear that there be divisions among you, and I hardly believe. Paul writes to the church of Corinth, he said, Before I even come, I hear that there's divisions. I'm not even out of there, and I hardly believe it. But watch right here. It says in verse 19, For there might be for there must be also heresies among you that they which are approved may be made manifest among you. What does that say? All that says is Paul said there's going to be some divisions, there's going to be some heresies, there's going to be some things that happen in the congregation, and these things must happen. Why? So you will know who's approved among you. So you will know who stands for truth and sound doctrine. You know, this time before the season, people ask, man, what the team gonna be like? Who, who, who looking good for y'all? I said, man, let me tell you something. We really don't know until the lights come on Friday night. You know, we had practice, everybody doing, you know, doing their thing. The lights come on. That's when you learn who you did it with. Paul is saying, hey, I got to follow up on their own, you know. Oh, I love Jesus. Ain't God all right? But when heresies and divisions and problems come up in the church, then you will know who stands for sound doctrine. Yeah. Then you will know who will tuck their tail and run. Then you know those that know Acts 2.38 only. When problems arise in the church, that's, that's, that's what you know. That's what you know. And Paul says, this is going to happen. It's going to, it's going to happen. Man. You can't be double-minded. Neither can we be reprobated. Somebody that outright rejects God's word, doesn't listen to sound doctrine, has no solid principles or values, they do what they want to do, when they want to do it, and they can care less what the Bible says about it. Yeah. Now, you know, you, you sit up there talking, you know, you talk to somebody. That is bad. That is bad. To the double-minded mind, it, it is bad too, because we know God, He deals with hypocrites. Bad. But that guy that has that reprobate mind, in Romans chapter 1, verse 28, the reason why God gives up people like that over is because they won't retain God in their knowledge. They don't want to hear God. And God said, you know what? Don't worry. I, I, I give up. I give you over. I give you over. So we got three things we got to look at in our transition. We're going to do it the way God wants to do it. We're going to put stuff away, and we're going to take his word, and it's going to be a smooth transition. We're going to try to be double-minded. We're going to try to play the field. Or we're going to be right with We're going to be our own men and our own women, and we're going to do what we want to do. In spite of what the Bible says, that ends badly, brothers and sisters. 
That is Babylon. The security of our new minds. A safe deposit box is something you and I have purchased or buy already. And we put things of value in it because we want to secure. We want to secure that thing that we put in that safe deposit box. It's worth a lot to us. How do we secure our, our minds? You know, we quick to tell the kids, you know, just about it. More than we do something, we quick to tell them. And the minds are tearing things away. Well, you know you and I can lose our spiritual mind. How do we maintain our spiritual mind? The same way you and I maintain our physical bodies. If your little boy came and said, Hey, can I get something to eat? Oh, boy, I'm thirsty. Man, did you get something to eat yesterday? <laughs> Man, you just had something to eat, honey. What you doing, know honey? Well, the body, naturally, Need something out. Maybe it's sometimes it's tough down today. See, we learn in Acts chapter 17, verse 11, that Paul commended the people at Berea because here Paul is an apostle. He's teaching them. He's an apostle. And he's teaching them. A guy that God came to personally, and he's teaching them. And Paul says, they received the word, but then they went back and checked behind me daily to see whether the thing that I was teaching them was so. So the way we say God our minds, we have to feed our minds daily. With what? God's word. Mm -hmm. We have to feed our minds daily with God's word. Search the scriptures. If our minds and our spiritual lives are so valuable, Wednesday and Sunday, only probably, probably ain't gonna get it. Let's do this. How about how about we test each other? How about uh, you don't eat until you study? Let, let, let's, 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 let's do this. Here. Let's go on. Uh, you know what? I ain't gonna eat. Drive out of the house, somebody that laid down in the yard. <laughs> Something wrong. We ought to train ourselves to feast on God's word. Dang. Dang. Not only do we need to study and search the scripture today, sometimes we need to be reminded of things. That's true. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes, you know, that teacher, she goes through it. She, she's working all week, getting you prepared for the test, you know, dealt with something Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then Thursday, she said, you know what we're going to do before Friday? We're going to back up and we're going to review all that we learned for the test on Friday. Look at 2 Peter, chapter 3. 2 Peter. We're going to look at chapter 3. Peter says, this second epistle, beloved, I'm now writing to you, in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of what? Remembrance. That ye be mindful of the words which was spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandments of the apostles and the word and the Lord, I'm sorry, apostles of the Lord and Savior. See, sometimes 
We just need to be reminded of some things. If we go to we read over such, 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 and we go on to the next day, we never visit it. Sometimes we got to back up, we got to review, and we got to be reminded. We got to make some things, we got to reassure some things. We got to reprove some things. Don't just scan over and keep going. Read it. And sometimes it helps to come back here and watch the movie. And then you watch the second time. Go, Man, was that, that was the movie last time? I don't remember that. It helps us to go back and to revisit. And the other would be secure our mind. We got to keep it sober. We got to keep it sober. See, when we don't keep our mind sober, it affects our judgment. That drunk driver out there in the car, you know the drunk driver was driving? The same yellow line on the right and on the left for the soul guy? It's out there for the drunk guy too, right? So he's driving. But what is he doing? They didn't erase the yellow line. They didn't erase that white dotted line out the middle. It's still there. But well, why he all over here and all over there? Why? His judgment. Is, you know, spiritually, spiritually, if we don't have a sound mind, the, God, the, the Bible and the guidelines, they're still there. But why am I all over here? Because it affects our judgment. It affects us. It makes us less aware. The Bible says we ought to be sober, vigilant. Watchful. Because we understand that there's somebody out there. The devil, he's like a roaring lion. And he's trying to fog my vision. He's trying to mess with my boundaries. He's trying to sneak up on me and get too close. The guidelines are still there. God's word is still there. The judgment and the ability to stay in between the guidelines is affected when we're not in our right mind. We have to be, we have to be sober to, to secure our minds. The importance of being like-minded. It's a bird of a feather, flock together. Me and Carl Bruce play golf out there at Big Bear. Every time we play, it's like a bunch of geese running around. Now, one time, I've been playing out there about seven years since I've been here. Now, one time, I've said a geese, an ostrich, a rooster, <laughs> a, a chihuahua. You know, they don't happen. You ever look over there and see some birds flying, see that one in the middle? And then, you know, they got the little beat, and they fly. And you look up there, it's a mockingbird, a sparrow, <laughs> a buzzard, <laughs> a parakeet. <laughs> no! What's up there? Birds of feathers, they flock together. See, if Phoenix keep his mind, Brother such says keep his mind. Sister such says keep her mind. You know, don't, don't, don't tell it, don't tell it what we end up there. But if Felix can get the mind of Christ, but such says keep the mind of Christ, sister such says keep the mind of Christ, then we build some commonality. We build it. And it can be done. It was done on the day that the Lord's church was established. Turn to Acts chapter 2. Turn to Acts chapter 2. We're going to look at verses 44 through 45. The Bible says, And all that believed were together and had all things common and sold their possessions and goods and part of them to all men as every man had need. How, how, uh, how safe is it when you get around like family and people that you know
know have your best interests at heart. How safe and how comfortable it is to be around people that you know believe the way that you believe. How safe and how comfortable is it to know that the people around you, they, they value you because they value themselves because they value God. When we are like-minded in Christ, it builds some common <coughs> uh, Sometimes brothers and sisters kind of force the issue. You know, you know, fellowship, you know. And we kind of have that. But before the fellowship needs to be the like-mindedness. It builds common then it makes our mission possible. Jesus said in Matthew 12, 25, that a house divided, you can't stay. You get a bunch of soldiers out there pulling in different directions. Whatever that mission is, however small, however great it is, if you got people pulling in all different directions, it never gets accomplished. It never gets accomplished. If we're going to do the work, we're going to have to pull in the same direction. Right. If we're going to do the work, we're going to pull in the same direction. And then lastly, it's probably more important. I want everybody to turn to John 17. John 17. I'm going to start at verse 20. This is Jesus' prayer to the Father. Jesus prayed in verse 20. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word, that they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sinned. a sense of responsibility to be like-minded? Do you feel a sense of responsibility to be one? Jesus said, so when the world look around and they're looking at the body of Christ and they're being one, they're being like-minded, then the world will know that you sent me. It made me cringe when I hear one brother say so, and then another brother say something different. God is not the author no confusion. of confusion. Sometimes it's a lack of study time. Sometimes it's a lack of knowing the content of what, what's being said. But God ain't going to say something to me. They're going to tell me to say something else to Brother Bruce. Right. No, that ain't God. God is not the author of that. Now what you have to ask yourself, all right, let's look at what you said, let's look at what he said, That's right. and let's examine it, and let's look at it, and let's read it. Well, we ain't going to be fussing over Bob. That's a lie. That's a devil's lie. Paul said it was his manner in Acts chapter 17, it was his manner that he was going to the synagogues and reason or debate the scriptures. Because you think about that logic. Well, Brother Sister said this. But Brother Sister said this. And we don't come together to find out the truth about it. Because we ain't going to argue about the Bible. What kind of logic is that? That's a logic that would cause us to stay in darkness. Amen. Anything that doesn't want to reveal is darkness. Anything that wants to bring light is truth and it's of God. If something is said, prove it. We ought to stand up for what it said. Mm -hmm. And then if I'm wrong in it, if you show me the content, well, Brother Curry, he would have kept reading. Or if you would have backed up a little bit more, this is what this is saying. And then, oh, man. I didn't, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. You got your little secret over there. Your little sect over there. He got his little secret over there. His little sect over there. Never come together on it. Never share it like on it. Never get to the root of it. Never know what's actually being said. That's not a God. Because God is not an author of the future. Amen. We have a long way to go. When I 
I say we, everybody, we have a long way to go in transitioning our minds to see and to think the way God sees and think. Because it, it, it's not going to change. And if we're going to get harmonious with him, it'll be because <coughs> we have the mind that was in Christ. And the mind that was in Christ would say, if you've heard me, you've heard the Father. The mind that's in Christ would say that the scriptures might be fulfilled. The mind in Christ would say, not my will, but thy will be done. If we're ever going to get to where we need to be, we're going to have to let this conversion take place in our mind. We know they're supposed to be in the church. We know blood of Christ. We have the blood of Christ. We know that. But the same Bible that teaches us this, teaches us. Let this mind be in you. It teaches us. Don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed in the renewing of your mind. We go from the old man to the new man. <coughs> old man, old mind. New man, new mind. Old man, old mind. New man trying to hold on to old mind. New man, old man. If I don't convert <coughs> mentally, I'm not converted. That's why Jesus would say, except you repent, except you change, you will all likewise perish. I hope I've said something today that would cause us to continue to look at who we are and who we are in Christ. Because at the end of the day, that's the only thing that, that, that matters. At the end of the day, the only thing that matters is how will you and I be judged when we lay up in parallel in front of a lot of people and we're dead. That's the only thing that matters. If you're not a member of the Lord of Christ, everybody knows this only First thing God wants the people, Israel to know us. Hear ye, O Israel, our God is one. That's why thousands and thousands of religions, that's why buildings on every corner talking about worshiping God their way. That's why that's not acceptable. If it's one God, one Bible, that equals 3,000, 4,000, 5,000 religions. That don't make sense. Everybody knows that. Everybody knows that. But the same thing that happens collectively in people is what I talk about us having some time individually. We want to do what we want to do. So I go, you can do that over there? Yeah. Sign me up. You can do that over there? Yeah. Oh, I can be homosexual? Oh, sign me up. We know. We know it ain't about God. It's about what we want to do. And I'm telling you, at the end of the day, every knee is going to bow. We're going to acknowledge that there's God. Every knee is going to bow. I hope I've said something that would cause you to want to put Christ on in baptism if you have. If there's a brother or sister, in this audience that's living and you know how you live. I tell my boys only young people, you gotta try to fool try like you fooling somebody, playing somebody. And then they only want to get played is you. And the only you know the only, you know, only person gonna get fooled is you. Oh people know you. They drive by you, you your apples hanging off, they ain't gonna say I saw blood on tree. If they see fruit, they know you. And eventually, we are who we are. And we know that. We know that. Stop. Let us stop playing with God. And let us be converted truly in our minds or our actions. And show that. If there's a brother and sister here that needs to repent and make something known to the congregation, we ask you to do that next time also. We ask whatever you need on you. Let us know if you stand and sing a song of invitation.